Tonight's meeting of the Regina Chapter of the Canadian Aviation Historical Society has as its guest speaker, Gordon Barnes. It's a great privilege for me to uh, introduce Gord because I've known him for, I guess, a smidgen over 40 years. One of my, uh, the fondest memories of my misspent youth is sitting in the yard of, of the house that he and his wife Roma used to occupy in Regina Avenue one beautiful summer day and drinking beer. And it might just have been at that at that um, soiree that Gord mentioned that his uh, father had worked on the Avro Aero project. Instantly, my beer came down to the table, and I was hanging on every word. Um, I was able through Gord to meet his father, the late Ken Barnes, in the late 1990s when I, I was at a CHS convention, and I basically, uh, I guess charmed my way into Ken's house and had a wonderful chat with him. A few years later, Ken showed up in Regina for Christmas and Ford took him, Greg puts him myself, and we went for lunch at some um, high-class restaurant like Smitty's where Ken held court, well and truly held court, and told stories about the Avro Aero and in, in particular gave a really interesting treatise on inlet, uh, engine inlet design, and why they all look the same. But he did it in such a way that even a yokel like myself could understand it. He was really quite something. Now, about two years ago, when I heard that the uh, Diefenbaker Center, more on John Diefenbaker later, was holding a uh, retrospective event on the Avro Arrow, I put the curator in touch with uh, Gord and I, some of his, his fine collection of artifacts uh, was, I guess, the star material at the Diefenbaker Center's um, uh, display on, on the arrow. Uh, you leveraging that, I asked Gord if he would speak to our chapter, and we were able to put it together, and here we all are tonight. So with that, I ask you to join with me in welcoming tonight's speaker, Gord's, Gord Barnes. Well, thank you, uh, Will, for that introduction. Very kind of you, and also to Gary um, and everybody else who's uh, participating this evening. Um, this is a story that I'm sure many of you actually know much better than I do. Um, I unfortunately won't claim to be an aviation historian um, and, and even very knowledgeable with respect to the industry. Uh, and and for that reason, my presentation may actually end up being a little shorter than what you typically may get in terms of the discussion. But um, I also want to begin by saying this is a story in terms of the Arrow, Arrow and the Avro company itself that I'm very conscious uh, there are thousands of families um, and people who have uh, participated in it. And, and many people still have very strong opinions around you know, the government decisions of the day. And uh, um, it's not something that uh, should, be, should be ignored or dismissed. Uh, and, and we should just respect that, I think. Um, I, I guess uh, I would like to uh, even say that having lived now for a long, long time in Saskatchewan, even here, um, even though, you know, the, the Toronto area is where the Avro and the Aero, Aero uh, industry was at the time, um, even here, I, I continually run into people who have stories to tell about relatives and family. Uh, and uh, I, I want to begin by saying that. Um, Dad um, was um, born in 1917, and uh, he passed away in August of 2005. He lived uh, uh, right up until the end at home. Um, we had uh, some people who were caregivers for him. It wasn't an easy process uh, uh, for a number of years for us. Uh, I was living, I had been living, to say, in Saskatchewan for 
long time. Um, we would regularly go and visit. Um, my sister and brother live elsewhere at well, other places as well. And, you know, that whole process uh, it was a difficult time for us. Um, and uh, Dad, I, I guess it's worth noting, he was born in 1917, and I'm sure people know the history of the, you know, the Great Depression and the impact on the economy during that time. So for his family, um, his parents and dad and his brother, um, those early years of life were, were tough. Um, they, they lived uh, in the east end of Toronto, and um, there's a record we have of over 20 addresses that uh, they lived at. And often they moved to keep ahead of the red collection man. So, um, and I actually remember that had a, uh, a big keychain with all the, the keys for the various places they lived. <laughs> so that was another thing that he kept. Um, so dad, as many of you know, uh, loved to draw and he loved aviation. Um, he, he drew with pencils and, uh, this is just one example. Um, dad was colorblind, uh, and, and that had a, another impact in terms of, uh, his career. And, um, I can speak to that a bit later. He did attend art classes uh, at the Ontario College of Art, uh, actually took some classes on Saturday mornings from, uh, from Lismer, the group of seven. Um, however, because he needed to work to you know, contribute to his family, um, he uh, had to drop out. And uh, we've actually got a, a letter from uh, Lismer, that was, Lismer that was sent to my father uh, kind of old, fragile, typed up letter, offering him uh, help if he could uh, possibly come back, but uh, he didn't. He didn't. Wasn't able to do that. Um, for those of you that did visit him um, at his home, you'll know that his basement was full of drawings, and uh, they were all spread over tables, um, and also lots of pencils. So, and the pencils, is my recollection, uh, were well chewed on uh, and, the, and that you didn't draw with. And I've often wondered if that might have had a bit of an impact later in life in terms of his health. So I, I guess I want to mention, too, that just as I get started here, in, in some cases, the slides, I, you know, I'm just going to show them. I won't speak to them particularly. And other times I'll, uh, I will sort of share some, some things about them. But I've got a, a series of slides here. There's an, another drawing my father did, it, in this case of the Lancaster. Uh, you'll see his, uh, his he, he signed that one on the bottom corner. Um, there's another one. And that's not... That's just a photograph and uh, another one. And I should, in, in referring to those, mention that his brother, Jack, uh, while dad was working on the Lancaster, uh, um, Jack, his brother, Jack, actually uh, flew during the war and flew the Lancaster. Um, his brother, Jack, uh, just passed away last year, and he was over a hundred years old. Um, we had been down to Toronto. His Jack's birthday was December thirty first. He had an early hundredth birthday party in November of two thousand and nineteen, um, and invited a lot of people. There was a couple hundred people there, and uh, you know, his health was unfortunately not doing great then but it was a good visit and as uh, to say he passed away uh, last summer so there, there's uh, 
some of the introductory stuff. And that's the slide that I was referring to, to in terms of uh, one of the drawings my father did. And then uh, the Lancaster. Um, another one. This is a photograph, obviously. And another one. So this is a picture of my, my mom, uh, actually. Uh, her name was Margaret Barnes. Um, mom and dad were married uh, in 1946, in July. And uh, mom worked in the, as a secretary to the president of Victory Aircraft. So a little bit of other history that not everybody may be aware of. Um, mom's health was uh, unfortunately significantly impacted by uh, Parkinson's and uh, she passed away before, before dad did. So this is another picture that I thought you'd be interested in seeing and it's actually from 1944, from September 9th, 1944. And it's the engineering department of Victory Aircraft at the Royal York Hotel. And uh, the, the interesting thing that we find about this particular picture is uh, dad's the one in the, the left-hand corner there. And he's the one that's not looking at the camera for some reason. <laughs> we, we have no idea what that's about. Uh, I don't know, sometimes we wonder if mom was in the room and he was looking at her, but we just don't know. <laughs> so this is uh, a, a picture of the, uh, oh, one, one too far, um, from the spring of uh, 1952. So... I was actually born in, in October of 1952, so just predated me a little bit. And I was the oldest one of three. And this is from the same publication. Many of you will have seen this, I'm sure. And later, uh, with the production team uh, and uh, the testing. Um, Dad's career spanned uh, uh, many, many years and uh, he worked on a lot of the different Avro projects. And I, I, you know, I've picked out a few pieces of uh, history to, to share with respect to that. Of course, the jetliner. Um, I, I, I this comment, personally, this is a, just a personal uh, observation. I always thought that the jetliner story was the, you know, it's not the right words, but, and, and I, uh, Will, will uh, having been a journalist, I, when I say underreported, I, it's not quite the word, right words, but you know, uh, the, the jetliner story as compared to the aero story, I think um, needs more uh, attention. And that's just the personal thought. Um, when you think that the jetliner was such a sophisticated airplane and they had to cancel it, the project, um, and then switch to the, the the work on developing the arrow. Um, it, it really is a shame. It, I think if it could have continued, um, it would have placed Canada well in terms of uh, the aviation industry, and uh, they really would have been uh, quite uh, successful. I know there was issues with the jetliner. I'm not, you know unaware of those, um, but uh, it was really a significant accomplishment. And I guess the, you know, other recollection I have is I did manage, um, you know, to, to go back home uh, 
and visit that and, and take them to a number of reunions, including one of the ones for the, uh, the jetliner reunion. And that was really special. Uh, they were typical, typically at one of the, you know, quote, airport hotels uh, by the airport. And uh, that particular one I do recall very well. So I'm just going to, and I, I'm sure many of you have seen the ver a number of these before. Uh, they've been in many publications and, uh, and uh, well circulated, uh, but uh, just flip through some of these for you. So these next few are from the, the blueprints. Uh, are two or three there. And there's the senior engineering staff that uh, my father worked for. It's a very memorable one that uh, has got well well circulated, and the the rollout in flight. Another one. I should say, you know, I, I mentioned I was born in 1952, and I do recall, even though I was pretty young, obviously at the time, those some of those first flights. So we we lived in Etobicoke near the 27 Highway north of Bernathorpe Road. If people are familiar with Bloor Street, north of that area, um, and uh, of course, growing up then. Uh, you know, 27 Highway was uh, initially just uh, one lane each way. Um, but then, uh, um, you know, it eventually, and there were farm fields the other side of it. So we'd ride our bikes across the area that is now Mississauga and all built up. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, re I do recall the flights. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, um, there was a lot of excitement at that time. Um, and uh, the other thing I would say about this is that just by his nature, Dad just loved aviation so much that, and not just specifically with respect to the arrow, anytime we were at home in the, in the front or backyard and any kind of plane flew over, <laughs> and there was always lots, Dad would look up in the air and just, you know, typically identify it without hesitation, you know, and, and there's, it was an area that um, there was lots of traffic, air traffic. Um, this is a pretty famous uh, picture as well. Uh, although, uh, you know, I, I was seven at the time. It, it's not me, but it could have been, I guess. <laughs> it's one way of talking about it. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure everybody knows what happened in terms of the cancellation of the Arrow and the Black Friday. Um, my specific recommend or recollection of that is day is that, you know, we we're young and... Uh, Mom said to us, uh, "You better, you better be really good tonight because my, Dad's not going to be happy when he gets home tonight." But, and obviously, you know, at home for uh, years later, um, you just didn't mention the Deepen Baker name. It just wasn't done, um, and it, it's a little bit ironic uh, in the sense that. Mom actually um, had been born in Prince Albert. Uh, and, you know, so there's sort of the, all that family history there too. So these are, 
just a few more photos of uh, uh, information that I call them, and uh, I thought it'd be in fun to share them tonight. So there's a picture of uh, Dad in the his basement with the model of the arrow, fiberglass model of the arrow. Uh, there's Bill's book. <laughs> um, other people, I'm sure, have seen this. It it tells the story of the flying saucer, but also other projects that. Avro got it into uh, post the the cancellation of the Avro Aero. Um, Dad worked on some pretty interesting projects uh, afterwards. Uh, his career uh, continued with the company, and then he went elsewhere eventually. But you know, he worked on. I, I'm not sure if everybody in the room will have heard of the big transporter project where they they were doing some research work on the development of a massive, massive transporter that, um, and there's documentation around this as well, but um, it might have, for example, been in, used in Northern, th this was being developed in the early 60s. So in Northern Canada, and it would just have massive uh, tires and the, uh, the transporter w would have been equipped with uh, space for many people to live and uh, just if it was in use uh, travel over the tundra and everything else um, the uh, interesting enough uh, in 1961 the, the funding for that project not only came from the government of Canada but also the, in particular the government of uh, Alberta um, Dad's career also included work on um, many other projects. Uh, he he worked at a they they job shopped him up to uh, Thunder Bay, uh, and he also worked out at Detroit for a while. So in those years during the '60s, when I was growing up, uh, Dad was away for many months at a time and managed to come home maybe once every three months. Uh, when he was up in Thunder Bay, he was working um, eventually for on the can car projects. That, uh, and in 1967, you, know, you recall 1967, the Expo 67 uh, um, work that was done uh, at can car on their uh, monorail system, or the, not monorail, but the train system there. So, uh, you know, and he came home and I, and had great stories to tell about uh, when he was in Thunder Bay, how he enjoyed going out into the uh, Quetico Park area uh, west of Thunder Bay. Um, later, uh, uh, Dad ended up at uh, Daffindel and, and then Spar. And uh, he, he finished his career uh, working on the um, Canada arm. And uh, we've got drawings of that too, but uh, there's, there's a lot, lot of history there. Dad just loved air shows. And uh, these are a couple from the Hamilton air show in 1985. But, you know, as kids, uh, we went to lots. Um, Obviously, the C and E uh, air show, and uh, and Hamilton, he always uh, just loved them. Uh, he when he came to visit here in Saskatchewan, when Mom and Dad did, he if there was anything special going on at the airport, including one year when the Lancaster came here, he was there, and and he got over to the air show in Moose Jaw a couple times. So, you know, one of the things I'm just going to kind of conclude with is, um, and I'm sure everybody's family 
has this uh, experience and it's going to evolve now with so much uh, photography being done digitally, but we've, we haven't obviously inherited a lot of old pictures and unfortunately a lot of them are undated and there's no information about them on the back. And uh, just for fun, I thought I'd share these. Um, it's a complete mystery to me. I wish I, you know, I think at one time dad told me the story of this, but I just don't know it now. And uh, maybe somebody else does. And if you can share it, that, that'd be wonderful. But uh, it's an interesting little bit of, uh, of a mystery to me. So thank you uh, again to the Regina branch and uh, to the Canadian Aviation Historical Society. As I said, I, I appreciate this has been probably shorter than many of your presentations and it doesn't include all the technical stuff, but uh, I'm sure other people can contribute to that. Um, there's just so much, um, you know, to, to think about in terms of the various things that have happened relative to the Arrow story. Um, at at uh, Dad's brother's uh, 100th birthday party, we met a fellow um, named Ken Vickers. And Ken is an um, uh, art teacher at OCAD, the Ontario College of Art and Design. And he's actually um, got a, he does these cigar, cigar box uh, projects. So he, he's done a cigar, cigar box arrow, <laughs> which I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. And, and you can find that online. Um, and uh, I didn't, I didn't, you know, have permission to share, but he, he's, he's got it online and uh, you could you could have a look at that sometime if you want to do some more poking around. Um, Will had mentioned the the exhibit at um, the Diefenbaker Center in Saskatoon. I thought a lot about that when I was approached, um, and I you know I appreciate you know years ago, Dad I'm sure would not have uh, liked that to have happened. Um, Having said that, I I felt it was an opportunity for a story to be told here in Western Canada about an important part of Canadian history. Um, it's told online, so it's archived on their website. Uh, I'll, I'll let it, I'm not going to comment about you know the politics of the day and all that stuff, but I just think that it was it was an important opportunity for the story to be shared particularly here in Western Canada for people to see it and hear it. And, uh, and that's why I agreed to uh, uh, support the, uh, the exhibit the way we did. 